I mentioned to you that Tony was swamped, <clears throat> and I've already introduced you, you to her, her to you, of course, and she was the one that was the queen of the tickets and got everybody's tickets for tonight and so forth. And we did both go to Auburn University and wound up here. Tony booked me. By the way, everybody has a rivalry. Auburn's is what? Oh, I hate to even hear you say the name. That's it, the rivalry. But this story is not about Auburn and Alabama. It's about the fact of how we feel about our arch rivals. Tony booked me to speak in Little Rock, Arkansas. Here was the situation. I was to speak early in the morning, go straight to the airport in Little Rock, and fly to Atlanta. And then I would catch a next flight to go to Lexington, Kentucky, and speak the next day. When I walked into the Little Rock airport, I knew something was wrong. It was just too busy. Very, very busy, people everywhere. But I went on and got in my line at my chosen carrier of the day behind a young man. He looked at me and I looked at him. I said, what's going on in the airport? And he said, I don't know. I'm so angry at myself. There's a problem. I can tell you there's a problem. I should have never flown to Little Rock. I should have driven this trip. I would be home tonight to see my son play ball. And I said, where are you trying to go? And his answer was Huntsville, Alabama. Well, I'm up here in North Carolina. I don't see people from Alabama every day. And I said, oh, I have a tie with Alabama. I went to Auburn. <laughs> it just blank, blank stare at me. Nothing. And I said, and you are an Alabama fan. <laughs> he said, how do you know? Because if you had been an Auburn fan, you would have said war eagle and we would have high fived. We might have even hugged. And you didn't do any of that. He said, we're not going to hug. <laughs> roll, tide, roll. <laughs> I said, well, we got a situation right here. Right at that minute, the boards all went off. The satellite had gone all out over Atlanta. We weren't going anywhere. And they came on and they said, if you can possibly travel tomorrow, you might want to change your plans. This man said to me, I'm renting a car. I should have done it in the first place and left. I called Tony, it's my solution to everything. And I called her and I said to her, what are we going to do? She got on the computer just like this and instantly said, you got to get to Memphis, Tennessee by two o'clock from Little Rock. She said, yes, get a car, drive to Memphis. There is a two o'clock flight at Memphis, takes you to Cincinnati. I will have a rental car in Cincinnati. You can drive to Lexington. You'll make it. You're not on till tomorrow. I said, thank you. Turned around and headed to the rental car place and encountered the Alabama fan, coming straight toward me. And he was kind enough to say, the cars are all gone. There are no more. Good luck. Roll tide. <laughs> I went into the rental place anyway and looked around, and all it had on everything was no cars, no cars, people shaking their head. And then it hit me. I knew one person in that little rock airport, and he was getting into his car, an Alabama fan. I didn't have a choice. I turned around and I started dragging my luggage running as fast as I could. And I don't mind him saying it and I don't mind saying roll tide, but I don't want it on tape, me saying it. But I was shouting the whole way, roo, <laughs> roo, dude, roo, roo. Just can't, be, I'm not gonna be on tape saying it. Roo, roo, roo. I went up to his car. I said, remember me? And y'all, the look on his face was one minute more. If I had just been gone one minute earlier, I would not be looking at this woman. Oh, woman is what he's thinking. And he said, what is it? And I said, don't you go near Memphis if you're driving to Huntsville. And before long, he put my bag in his car. And I'll tell you something. He could not have been nicer. We had the best time. We laughed. We talked. We just had the best time. And I even said to him, if you get near Memphis, take me to a hotel. I got a cab and get to the airport. He drove me right up to the curb and put me out. And we stood there for a minute while he got my bag out. It was so awkward. <laughs> he looked around. I looked around. We looked over there, and as fast as we could, we hugged. <laughs> when I came home three days later, Tony was in my office, and she had lived this story. She didn't need to hear it. 
and she was filing. She had a lot of papers she was filing, and she was working. I could tell she was busy, wanted to get out of there. And I had just told my husband, left brain, what I did. I thought he would think that I was so proud of me for solving with Tony's help the situation, Tony. When he heard what I had done, he said, don't tell me this. You got in a car. You got in a car with a man you did not know to go two states away. Have you lost your mind? What do we tell children not to do? <laughs> you don't even go two blocks with a stranger. You never get in the car. He was visibly upset. I can't believe this. I can't believe it. Can anybody else help me out on this? Tony just kept filing away, filing away. He said, I'm serious about this. I can't believe you would do something like this. Tell her, Tony. Tony slammed the drawer shut and turned around and said, okay, okay, I didn't want to get in it, but all right. I can't believe, Jeannie, you got in the car with an Alabama fan. <laughs>